Perfect. All right, so we'll introduce ourselves. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Eric's Talk. You'll probably notice that this episode is really different and weird because you aren't seeing faces. But my friend Freddy here and I have been on the show before, and we're going to be shooting the breeze about video games and other life stuff. And uh, so why not watch our perfect gameplay of Super Mario World while we speak? Yeah, shooting the breeze. We've shooting been talking a lot already today. Yeah, we've been talking about various topics. Stories and life and game design. And then I thought to myself, like, why the frick aren't we, like, Document. make it? Yeah, documenting this. Because <laughs> honestly, it's like, we're still going to talk anyway. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. It's probably the most overused metaphor of mine, but it's because it's often so applicable. It's very convenient in life. to do so. Exactly. And we can listen to the music. 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 I combine beautiful <laughs> music in the same word. Words. Music. I meant to say beautiful music of Koji Kondo, the composer of many a Nintendo game. But he also, he still does. He he's usually behind the scenes now, like um, like Mihito Yokoto and like the Animal Crossing composer did Breath of the Wild. So oh wow. So um, like he's usually not the main guy anymore. Okay. He was the main guy for NES, SNES, and N64, and then he's kind of like been this teacher ever since, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, he still has some of my favorite songs, like. Star Fox 64 is my favorite um, game music that he's done. Uh, but he's obviously done... So, like, on those three consoles, he basically did um, every game that Nintendo themselves made. So, like, all the Mario's and Zelda's, that kind of thing. Okay. So he's got, he's got quite the resume. Quite the resume, indeed. Okay. I am the worst at this game! But, well, actually, that shell is bullshit, so... Is that supposed to be a Goomba? No, those are not Goombas. They're, yeah, they're actually not Goombas. Most people would assume they're Goombas. I don't remember what they're called. I'm going to look it up right now. Because I think they also appeared in the 3D games. I My phone's dead. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, I can't look it up. But I can put their real name on screen here. Because yeah. it's like, it's Goom something. That Koopa does not like you. At Whoa. all. Yeah, that Koopa was very... Very mean. Very mean. But like... Yeah, they're technically a different species. They're probably related to Goombas in some way. In some way. Cousins. But I can't tell you. Oh, dude, if you follow the show, you get one up. Oh, yeah! Oh, he jumped over it! Dang Almost. it! Alright. That para... whatever he is. Pagic. Paraplegic. <laughs> Well, throw him in the hole where he belongs. Dumb paraplegic. <laughs> Man, I didn't think we were gonna get politically incorrect so quickly. Yeah. But we done it. We done did it. We did it. Okay, I think now is... Can you explain to me? Because I know I, I told you we'd talk about this. I can probably explain it if it involves Nintendo. Uh, it does involve Nintendo. Oh! I mean, it can. Oh, I can explain it. Yeah, maybe. What is it? Furries. Oh, furries. Okay. Well, yeah. I actually have an Eric's Talk episode completely dedicated to the subject. Completely. Um, but yeah, the the base level definition of what a furry is, is that you like anthropomorphic characters, which most people do. So most people are furries. So ha ha ha. Ha ha. Most people like Disney animals and like characters. Star Fox, perfect example. Mm. Those are furries. Yeah, they are. And that's why they share the same name with people who like those characters. Some people want to get down and dirty with those fantasy characters. <laughs> which is still furry, but to a higher degree. Uh, yeah. So there's your simple definition. Okay. Fuck! Wow. <laughs> oh my you, god. No one did that but you, man. That was You yeah. ran off a cliff. No, it was, I tried jumping, but the block was above me. Oh. And it just completely well, denied my... See, like, to me, it looked like you just killed yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I assumed the worst of you. I'm sorry. What else is new, huh? Oh, shit! <laughs> That's good enough. 
Hey, it's it's less glary now. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. All for you people. Keeping you entertained. Only thinking about the viewers. So, let's see if I can beat this level that Freddy couldn't because he's a noob. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so watch much you. You're gonna die. You're probably gonna lose now that you said that. Oh yeah? It always happens. Every time you talk trash about me or the level oh, yeah? of the game, you always die and you always get what's coming to you. You, oh, okay, so that's a good topic. Do you believe in karma slash fate? Ooh. See, I'm not religious. Me but that's not really like a religious. Thing. Yeah, it's just like a it's, it's like a spirituality. Like yeah. Does is there like a way of things? I think I believe in fate to a certain point. Yeah. But it's kind of fun too, honestly. As far as karma goes, like not necessarily. I don't. Though. I don't think I believe in karma. I think of. I think. I believe in that, like, okay, you did something bad, and that happened as a result to it. Yeah, well, like... But wouldn't that be karma? You know what I mean? People can make, make... People can define what karma is. Like, there's so much probability for things to happen in life. So if something bad happens to someone to someone who did a bad thing, yeah, then people could say that's karma. But good and bad things happen to us literally all the time. So it's your... So is karma, like... So like, if something, say like, I made fun of you, yeah. as I often do in jest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and then tomorrow, I got like, an F on a test. Okay, see, Like, no. those events aren't related, but you could call it karma because, because you feel like it, right? Yeah. So like, that's like karma. That kind of karma, I don't believe it. You yeah, know. but it's not like an outside force, like, made it happen. Yeah. Like, just bad things happen to someone who did something bad. Exactly. So yeah, I don't think I believe in it either to the extent of, oh, it's this magical force. Like, when you're talking about, like, oh, uh, I punched a kid in the face and then he got buff and punched me back. Yeah. That, I... And that's, like, directly a result of what you did in the first place. Exactly. That's, yeah. So that's not really karma either. That's just, like, no dip crap that happened. Like, yeah, like, it just, you know, it happens. But I don't know if I would believe in like karma, like, oh, uh, you know, don't do things. Because human beings kind of like, we need to make things more significant than they are sometimes. Yeah. So like, I feel like that's where fate comes from too. You know, like, oh god, <laughs> nearly got crushed there. Yes. See, if you would have got crushed there, actually, since you didn't get crushed, since you narrowly avoided that, I could say it was fate that Luigi survived right there. Yeah. Because, you know, he had a mansion to ghost hunt in later in life, so <laughs> obviously he couldn't have died. Obviously. So I could call that fate. But it's yeah. obviously not fate because we're playing a video game that millions of other people have, you know? And I, I'm sure, like... Oh, a, a cape spin on them kills them for good. Did you oh, know yeah. that? Wait. Did you know the game? Yeah. Oh my god, that changes everything. I know, I've taught. Ah, oh my oh. god! <laughs> Dude, you are playing risky today! Dude, that was like, oh my god. Holy crap. I barely made that. Oh my god. Again! Oh my god! <laughs> Dude, I would never do this, and that's why it's so exciting to watch. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh my god. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, no, alright. I'm not I, even gonna... You, you gotta cut your losses at some point. Yeah. You can't I'll be get a too badass. Cocky. All the time. Get too cocky and that'll kill me. Holy pooper. See, like, fate, I... Whoo! Ah, fate is different. I guess you could say something yeah. feels like fate, but... Well, it's like... See, I kind of, like, want to believe in, in it to some extent, because it's like... We want to think that it's more than just shit floating in the universe, right? Yeah. So, like... Fate is, like, kind of comforting. If you're a good person. Because then you... Oh, see? Green Block Palace helped you, because that wouldn't be there otherwise. Oh. <gasps> but. <laughs> oh wow, you fall all the way down the damn tower. Well, dude, I can't show you up on national television like this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I you make those risky moves, then you have to live with them. All right. It's really sad. Alright, what were we talking about again? Uh, fate? Fate? Yeah. Dr. Fate. Like, <laughs> like, it's kind of like the difference between 
Between. Between being. Man, I'm really combining words today. Between. <laughs> between. It's like the difference between being like atheist or agnostic. Like agnostic, you're kind of more open-ended. Like you have an open mind. Mm. Like I'm agnostic. Yeah. So like, fate could be a thing if there is some force out there. Right. Yeah. So like, I could, that's why I don't dismiss it entirely, right? But if you were atheist and you kind of believe a by the numbers like scientific thing, like nothing has that greater significance, then maybe you wouldn't believe in fate. Or maybe atheists do believe in fate. I mean, I I'm not to in say because their own yeah. But yeah. It's really interesting to think about. Yeah, it is. You know, killing dry bones brings about these thoughts in people all the time. Certainly. The, the common thoughts while planning is a Super Mario game. See, who says playing video games is rotting the brain? I disagree, good I sir! I disagree. I feel like it makes it so much more. Yeah. Well, we were talking about that earlier, too. Like, video games, like, they are, like, productive, I think. Yeah. Like, and, I mean, we're biased because, like, we play a lot of video games. Of course we want to say that we're not wasting our time. Yeah. But I genuinely believe that because, I mean, <laughs> we have a different kind of, like you said, flex flexibility. Like, we are reacting to things. Like, our mind is active. Like, you can't turn your mind off and play this level. Yeah. You have to know what you're doing, right? Yeah. So, like, at that level, they're productive and educational. Alright, Morton, time to die. This boss is easy. <laughs> I say as I miss him. <laughs> Look at you, so stupid. Like, I was watching... I believe it was, uh... I was watching... What was that show? What's that show? Survive... No. Um... It's like there's like a bunch of people and they go out into like the wilderness. It's not naked and afraid, but it's like, is it Survivor? It's a group? It could be Survivor. I think it is Survivor. Let's just say it's Survivor. Okay. So, and then like, they had to do like this challenge where they had to like put together a puzzle. And one person from one group was like an old like professor and he was like really smart. Yeah. And the other person from the other group was like a young gamer. Oh. Who, like competes in video games and things like that, and he destroyed that puzzle much faster than the professor. I like the story, you man. know. So it's like, you know, video games have really challenging puzzles. Yeah. And you know, maybe that's why. And it's not even games that do have puzzles. It's just like even like strategy games. Like I think he played like New Legends. Or I don't well, know that's cool. Played. I mean, like the Ghost House in Mario World are puzzles too. Yeah. So it's like, most games have puzzles when you think about it, mm -hmm. and they do, like, yeah, they test your, like, physical reactions, but they also test your mental capacity. Yeah. It's like, like, your memory, you know, just your thinking process of things. Yeah. And, like, that's without even getting into games that, like, change my life, like a Zelda game or The Last of Us or Metal Gear or Shadow of the Colossus, one of your favorites, like, mm -hmm. that, like, changed my life morally. Yeah. Like... The stories are so impactful that I think about how they shape my life. Yeah, you know that, that and like video games. Like, I want to compare them to you know, like you can compare them to books, movies. You know, oh, like, for sure, they're all no art difference. They're all like storytelling art forms. You just control it exactly, and you spend more time on which it, which makes it even better. Like, in my opinion, yeah, and it just sparks new types of creativity, ideas, entertainment, just anything. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think if you spin jump, you can go through the blocks from above. Okay, let's try that. Oh, only when you're big. Only when I'm big, okay. That's yes. Oh, great! <laughs> Wonderful! See, like, you gotta be creative for this shit. Yep. Also, for the record, those bats, quote unquote, look like parrots. They're green. Yeah. They're green. Green. I will always. Oh, you can become big. Go get the mushroom. Oh, now you can do that. But see, like you could have solved this puzzle a different way by using the the Koopa shells to go through them horizontally. But now you can attack it vertically. Oh no, dude! Like video games are educational. educational. Screw anyone who says otherwise, right? Yeah. Like I just don't like. I don't. Oh, but you are still stuck. It's only the people that have not played video games. Exactly, I've not right? I've one person that played video games like, these are bad for you. Exactly. We were talking about this yesterday, too, when we were playing Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> that, um... Um... Why is this? Like, the people who... <laughs> this is hard! 
I don't know how to like. Wait, I think all the buzzy beetles are like gone from that bottom row except for that one. So maybe you can just walk on the ground. If you had the cape, you could take care of those blocks no problem. But you don't have it. But anyway, most of the people who think video games cause violence, or you can just take the hit and keep running. Oh, <gasps> yes! Oh. Use invincibility? There you go. See, that was a outside the box way of solving that puzzle. Yeah. You got hit, use your invincibility frames, and you're good to go. Anyway, yeah. people who think video games cause violence usually haven't played a damn game in their life. Mm -mm. And we talked about this yesterday. It's usually politicians who want to blame something that makes sense because they have this this like self-confirming bias of like what they see must cause the problems in the world. Video games is something you can see, and you can see kids playing it. So it's like, oh, the serial killers must be created by playing Grand Theft Auto, which is like uh, a really extreme example, but like that's my point stands, I think. Yeah. You gotta run fast, baby. Run fast. Uh... Run fast. Run fast. Oh, no! oh god! Oh! Damn, you even walked on lava there for a second. Yeah, I did. I noticed that. I was. That's why I Holy stopped shit. screaming. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Wait. Yeah, because like, I thought the invincibility star didn't protect you from love. And it doesn't. There was something I wanted to say about... The violence thing? Or something else? Oh! I think it was about, like, the entertainment, like, just video games. How they're, like, how, how they're good for us, in a way. Yeah. Well, it's like, I think, by... You know, I think people have made this argument before, too. See? The blue shell lets Yoshi fly. Anyway, I think I'm gonna get rid of Yoshi, too. That's okay. Actually, I don't have to get rid of Yoshi, so I land on him, he can do this. Hell yeah. Cool. Alright. See, I solved that puzzle in a different way than Freddy did. Yeah. Because I had different tools at my disposal. It's like I'm a boy scout. <laughs> Which I am. <laughs> Twist. Hashtag not really a twist. Oh, I can use Yoshi to my advantage, man. Ugh. Well, I had to get rid of Yoshi for the secret exit, but I think that's worth it. By the way, Eric has been doing all of these secrets and going all these paths that I've never seen as a child. <laughs> so this is like all, like, what you just saw was completely new to me, and I had no idea it even existed. I'm enriching your life, man. Yeah. In more ways than one. Because he's my child, I birthed him into the clearing call. Certainly. Fun fact. Anyway. Duh! Video game violence I don't buy it because you can also get rid of that urge to be angry through catharsis. Like, stealing a vehicle in Grand Theft Auto probably is healthy, actually. And like, there's research that supports that. Quite a bit. Jumping on a Goomba can also provide the same kind of catharsis. So again, video games. They're, they're important, PayPal. You don't have to be killing people, you know. Exactly. There are games where you uh, take Undertale, for example. The literal point of that game is that no one has to die. Like, that's why it's such an impactful RPG. You know? Because, like, most games, you do have to kill stuff. Oh, dude, you, 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 <coughs> you did it! Or, like, take a puzzle game like freaking Tetris. No one has to die there either. Yeah, but it's... But it's super fun. It's satisfying, you know. Hell yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Well, what? So, playing strategy games like Fire Emblem and like Advance Wars and things oh, like that, yeah. I, I love the turn-based like, strategy, Dude, things like that. Me too. Like, I never did it as a kid because I don't think I, my attention span was strong enough. Yeah, exactly. But as an adult, like, dude, Fire Emblem is my shit. But I'll tell recently. you what, that made me, like, I recently learned how to play chess and that made me, like, I honestly, like, I'm not trying to, like, toot my own horn, but... Yeah. That made me good at chess, like, Dude, really quickly. Dude, totally, and I love really chess. Quickly. And I keep telling, like, people, like, hey, you want a new Nintendo franchise to play? Uh, Fire Emblem is is chess with emotions. Yeah. So, yeah. if you're into that, <laughs> if you like chess and uh, crying, then play Fire Emblem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, which Fire Emblem games have you played? Well, I had one on... Oh, so you might have played and the then, first one and that and came then out. In Awakening. The US. Yeah. Was oh. I still have not beaten. Well, how did you uh maybe slight spoilers for Fire Emblem Awakening in the next couple minutes. Did you oh. 
Did you? How many chapters did you play? Did you? Well, you know? I started making babies. Okay, you started making babies, so you've so seen Emran's death. Yes. Dude, I cried so freaking hard when that, that happened. Nuts. You can pick up that vlog. <laughs> <laughs> wow, all that for what? All that for nothing. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, Emran's death. One of the most tear-jerking moments I've ever experienced in a game. And I've played some, some more. Mature games. I don't want to tell you about my tear jerking moments. Dude, maybe you should. Okay. So, what are your tear jerking moments? Because I can share some of mine as well. I even did a countdown on my channel where it's like top 10 uh, saddest moments from Nintendo games, so. Um, I'm, not, I'm no stranger. Well, like I said yesterday, I believe. Wow. I actually have a good amount of stars. Um, oh, hell yeah. Nice! You got a few of us. Sweet. Um... Wow. I'm usually really bad at that. Yeah, no, I... That looked like the hardest thing ever, but... <laughs> like I said before... Uh... Breath of the Wild spoilers mm. ahead. Mm. Mifa. Mm. Mifa, my fish waifu. Yeah. Goddamn. <laughs> and then... Like, realizing she was dead, sp specifically. Like, yeah, when you, cause specifically for, for you and I, that was the first um, Divine Beast we took on, was, yeah. uh, Baruta. Yeah. So, I think it was for a lot of people, because the Zora, uh, the, uh, the Linnea region was easier to get to than the others, I think. Yeah. So I think it was for a lot of people uh, when they played Breath of the Wild this year. So, um... I didn't think the Zelda story had was going to have enough balls to like keep characters dead. Yeah. And then that your whatever your first divine beast is, that's when you realize for sure that the story actually does indeed have enough balls to do that, and it sucks. <laughs> but I also appreciate it a lot. It was because damn, it was amazing. It's impactful that way. Very. It was that. That wasn't the worst though. I think the worst. For a video game, the worst it yeah. was The Walking Dead. Dude, Telltale, dude, The Walking Dead. I've never played them, but I've watched let's plays of them all. So dude. spoilers for The Walking Dead again. Um, yes. Because <laughs> I I teared up multiple times throughout those three seasons and Michonne. I haven't seen no. I have not been in season two or three. Oh okay. It well was, then I I've gotten like halfway through two. And yeah. It was, it was awesome for my plate. I still need to beat it. But Ooh. oh whoa I whoa share, I forgot I can share wives with you. We literally made that criticism about Donkey Kong Country that we couldn't do that. Can you can this game? Here it is. You want to steal somewhere else? Sure. How do you do that? Uh, I think you just press right or left. Is it or something? Press the. Oh. There you go. <laughs> it's really half and half. Just there aren't that many buttons. Just press them all. There we go. We're both up ten. Okay. Now how do I leave? Uh, trigger select start. Okay. Cool. Just press everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. No. The Walking Dead. The end. Oh, dude. I was oh, when um, when Clementine has to shoot Lee. I was bawling. Did you play it? Yeah. So what'd you choose? Um. To let him turn or to shoot him? I chose to let him turn. Oh man. I chose to let him turn. Yeah. Cause I, you couldn't bring yourself to do it. That's a hard damn decision. Like. I yeah. Oh. And I played it again. The le the Let's Player I watched, I, I love them, Stephen and Mal, what Stephen plays. They chose to shoot him, and I think I would too. Not to say that it's an easy decision. Mm. And I don't think there's a right or wrong decision. But like, I think that, what, I think that's what Lee wanted. Because it would make sense, because what if she had to be in the position and she couldn't do it? Yeah, but like, know? what you, what you chose was kind of like, Maybe a more realistic option because you think, uh, what, however old she is, like, do you think she would I she would, would be able to do it? Probably not. Mm. I mean, Clementine becomes more of a badass throughout the future seasons, but again, she is young, you know. Yeah. That's why games like that are so important and special too. Is like they really make you think about the ramifications of your actions. Yeah. Like sometimes it takes a zombie apocalypse to like think about the human condition sometimes, you yeah. know? That's why The Walking Dead and, like, fantasy in general is just so it's cool. It's storytelling. Like, video games are storytelling. Yeah. You know and I mean? they're, like, the most interactive story medium, or really the only one. Mm -hmm. 
in a way, where you directly control, like, the principal character. Oh. Nice. So there are, like, I think there's multiple ways through this level. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, if you hit the switch to the... Oh, wait. Is it here? Go to the right. Just keep carrying the switch with you. Alright, go over to the right again. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> keep carrying the switch. Here we go. I don't remember... Like, I'm pretty sure this lets you go to a secret exit somewhere. I don't remember exactly where. Where is it? Oh. oh, you have another switch. Okay, hit that switch, and then that way you have a backup. Okay. Again, I don't remember. I f <laughs> Whatever. I feel like it was in the water back there, but you can get the normal exit anyway. Uh. Oh! oh! <laughs> but yeah, um... Some of my favorite emotional moments are from seasons two and three, which I won't talk about because Freddy hasn't seen them yet. But dude, um, seasons two and three are like just as good. So okay, I'm if, glad to hear that. If you make that investment, like you will not be disappointed. Good. Oh, the, if you carry a switch to the end, you get a mushroom. Oh shoot! I never knew that. <laughs> That's awesome. See, like the Super Nintendo games, still learning new things about them in 2017. Yeah. We are playing the SNES Classic, by the way, so... Yeah. Sponsored by Nintendo! Just kidding, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do some Star Road stuff, because why not? Oh, this level is... You can farm it, farm it dude, for one-ups. Oh, shoot. I didn't even know... What? Yep. Blue Yoshi? Yep. Since when? Since... Since right now, baby. Oh, 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 oh! Yes, I got another star, so watch me get all these one-ups, dude. Just kill all the fish. One-up, one-up, one-up. It's a good thing you stole some of my lives. <laughs> hey, you can share some of them. Yeah, I just got like 10 lives. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! 11! Get another star, dude. And now... There are no more stars. See, like, they won't turn into stars unless you have a star. So that's why that second star, I was lucky that my invisibility didn't run out. Oh, so you could take the normal exit and do, and go in the warp pipe, but the oh secret is down here. Oh my god. Wasn't another one. Educational? Yeah. And, because otherwise, that wouldn't happen. You couldn't go to the next star road level. So now I could do all of star road by getting the secret exits. So is that the only star road? Nope, there's five. Oh, Just god. like there's five points on a star. Oh, that's I love good it. Good observation. I know, right? Can you handle this ghost house? So I cried during The Walking Dead one. I cried during. No, I don't. I, I, I you, we, you and me both. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. And then um, I'm gonna say Metal Gear Solid Four, but I won't tell you. Ooh, I think I actually you can because I do know that game story vaguely through pop culture. Like, I know how it ends. Was okay. it the ending? Uh... It was part, sort of. It's like... Like, it was it with, uh... Just, there was like a, this whole ending phase. And it was like this part... Was it part... the microwave tunnel? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was rough. I can't wait to play that! <laughs> just... Oh my god, you need to. And cry my balls out, because it's like a celebration of the whole series, while at the same time, like... Ripping your heart out. Yeah. It so, was just like... That's just oh good shit. God. That game was just so... Because, like, okay, so... Have you played Metal Gear Solid Five? Yeah. You can tell me stuff about games I'm not that familiar with. Um, so, like, 4 was originally supposed to be the end. And it is. Yeah. Like, uh, if you're going chrono Chron chronologically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so then they made 5. So, do you view, like, 4... Because this is how I assume you might look at it. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Do you view 4 as, like, the, the like epitome of storytelling Metal Gear Solid, and 5 as, like, the epitome of gameplay? Because that's how they seem to me, on like, as an outsider. I'm going to say, here's how I view I'm going to give you three games. Okay. Um, 
Four, storytelling. Yeah, which makes sense. Five, gameplay. One of the best ah! gameplay ah! I've ever felt. And that's not me being biased either. Like, the controls Well, it, it did get game of the year and shit, so I mean... The controls, like, were so good. The best third-person controls I've ever... In Metal Gear Solid 5? Yeah. Damn, that's, that's high praise. Like, oh my god, I'm telling you. Oh my god. God damn, I gotta play. So yeah, gameplay, definitely number five. Um, the mix between story and gameplay goes to the three. Yes, and I've played Snake here, so like, I, I definitely felt like it had a good balance. Yeah. Because like, four has like, hour-long cutscenes, right? And that's like, not an exaggeration. Yeah. No, like, honestly, I think one of the cutscenes are two that's hours. That's insane. You could actually do, um, that, that level, the red dot level by the star. Because I didn't get the normal exit there. Oh. So you can get the normal exit and go to more secret places if you want. Yeah, let's give that a shot. But like, so I, I love cutscenes in games, so something ex yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Something excites me about super long cutscenes. No, a lot of people had problems with it. Like, my one friend just calls it a movie, and I'm like, okay, but no. I mean, it's kind of like <laughs> the gameplay, which is, I'm assuming, is pretty solid. The gameplay is really good. Like. It's like it's the gameplay is separated by short movies. Yeah. Is that kind of what it's like? Yeah. Because that's what it sounds like. Yeah. But I'm kind of okay with that because it's a damn long game anyway, right? Yeah. So yeah, whatever. And like honestly, I'll like the gameplay is good. Like it, it's the boss battles. Oh my god. The oh, are they good? The boss fights are so good. Metal Gear Solid. See, I got Red Yoshi now. Some of the best boss battles ever. What is your favorite Metal Gear Solid boss battle? Because like, I, I know the Snake Eater ones, obviously, and that's... And like, I know some of the other ones just by knowing about them, but I haven't played them. I'm gonna have to say... Are you gonna be like, generic like every YouTuber and say Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid 1? No. No, I won't. I'm gonna look up the name, because I forgot what it was, but... What game is it from? 4. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, is it... 5 did disappoint me, though, because there were... Not many great boss battles. See, what 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 is up and with that lately? Modern games don't have a lot of boss battles. It's just because, like, I don't know. Do Dark like Souls the... is the boss battle game now. And... But, like, I don't even feel like those are... Some of those are good. Because, like, I've seen people play them, and it's like, just hit it a billion times. Yeah. So, like, true. that's not like, a I like boss when battle. there's twists. Like, Metal Gear Solid bosses have twists. Or, like, I like bosses that have, like, gimmicks or something. Like, like one of the Mario Odyssey boss fights is like you control this 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 um, Egyptian statue's hands and then you use them to punch itself in the face with Cappy. Mm. And like that was the that was the final round of the Nintendo World Championships. Oh. So like that's really clever and creative. So I, I like bosses that have thought put into them, either with the gameplay or the story. Yeah. But um yeah like do you play the Batman Arkham games? Oh man. I've played all of them, but no, I've only played City and Knight. Okay, well, City has great bosses, and Knight doesn't have any. Mm -mm. So that, that was that, so disappointing. That's like a disappointment for me personally. Yeah. Is like Arkham City is the best Arkham game for many reasons, I, I think. But part of that was how all these amazing villains had some amazing boss battles, like Mr. Freeze, Ra's al Ghul, Clayface, like. Yeah. And Arkham Knight, just you, you. Fought some tanks. I don't know if you can count them as boss battles. My my brother, who's a huge Arkham fan, doesn't, um, and yeah. I see why. I I wouldn't. They're just harder enemies. Yeah, right. Like they're not. Enemies. There's no pop in circumstance. And back to your question, my favorite boss would be Sniper Wolf. Oh, I've heard Sniper. I've heard that name. So I I think people like it. Sniper Wolf. It was. Is he related to the end at all? From Snake Eater, because um, he's a, the end is a snake. Oh, so I, that's my in my story-driven head. No, you don't. This level's not for you, baby. It's baby. It's not for you. <laughs> no, I think. Oh, I see. No, because like I know Metal Gear Solid has like a lot of connections amongst its characters, so that's why I would assume such a thing. I got the name wrong. It's crying. Crying Wolf. Crying Wolf. Sniper Wolf is someone else. Oh, that definitely but sounds no. like a Metal Gear Solid Snip, uh, Yeah, there, there's game. a lot of snipers in Metal Gear Solid. But, um... Yeah. The end? The end's a good one. Yeah, no, I... 
I was, I, I have, it was a tie between the end and Crying Wolf. And they're both snipers? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, Crying Wolf is... Snipers make for good stealth bosses, who would have guessed? <laughs> that makes sense. Crying Wolf is like... She's in a machine, and it's like a, a robot wolf. I'm oh, Jesus. Do you, I don't know if... No, I don't know. Were well, you just spoiling the gameplay? Or the design? Because you can talk about that. I, I can talk about the gameplay. Yeah, so what's it? What so, I'm, I'm not gonna get too in-depth, but okay. basically it's like, you're in this giant, like, wintery, um, like... Like, it's just snow everywhere. And... Yeah. There's like a blizzard going on, you can't see a single thing. There's there's people looking for you, you have to stay stealthy, oh, and dude. at the same time there's a robot, wolf, yeah. that can snipe you from any spot, and you have to like, just sneak around and it just takes a while, oh my god. That sounds awesome. Dude, oh my god, it's so cool. That sounds really awesome. And just like the different, there's so many things you can unlock in for. Oh, like, man. as weird as it seems, you know, as like, all the cutscenes, there's like a lot of things you can unlock. Dude, I can't wait to play oh, those secrets. games. Oh my god, I love it. Alright, go for this one more time. I would go to the right. Okay. Like, go to the right path. Don't. Don't go up left like you did last time. I think it's it's safer. Oh, maybe you can't. I think, yeah. I think I was Kate Mario when I did it, so that's why I could. Oh, okay. Okay, so just don't die. <laughs> uh, it's oh, and now you can go right. Oh, I see. But now you're rich. True. This is kind of like a vertical maze of sorts. Kick his ass away. Yeah, boss battles are a very special thing for me. And yeah, they're really like. As a, I, I love Monster Hunter. Like I don't know if you've ever played it. I but haven't, but I understand why people love it. Like, it's so what's not to love? You're, like everything's a boss almost. And it seems like it could be repetitive, but I promise you, it's not. Dude, what do you think Oddly about enough, the Monster Hunter World game, which is like a D freaking Monster Hunter now? I don't even watch the gameplays because I. You I want to wanna preserve play. yourself? Yeah. There's certain I games that I do that with, like, I did that with Metal Gear Solid 5, I just didn't watch anything of it. Dude, I, I would do that if I wasn't such an impatient man. Yeah. But, like, I, I totally respect if you can. Also, I'm a video game journalist, so I can't I can't afford to, like, go silent on things anymore either. Yeah, that's as, true. As, like, a profession. That's true. I mean, you but, like, dude, I, I agree with you. Go silent on games you care about if you can, because there's, there's more surprises. Yeah. But going back to boss battles, like, boss battles are just like a great... They're like a great... Like, they're like a marker of success. It's like, because usually you have to be good at the game, you gotta have your shit squared away. Yeah. So like, it's like a test of your skill, but the best bosses are also very, like, story-driven in a way. So like... There's important shit going on. I'm going to get out of Star Wars Road because, okay. like, the secret level that I have to do in that level, like, we need the uh, the switches, like, oh. all of them pressed. So oh. it's gonna be hard. I, I could do it with like Blue Yoshi, but I don't want to waste my time. Instead, I can show you what we've unlocked. Yay. You can go on top of here. Oh. Did you know? That? No. Well, now you know. But yeah, the best boss battles have, like, story weight to them, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, if it's an antagonist, like, you have some good confrontation, some good dialogue, it's written well, it's designed well. These Koopas are annoying. And, like, Shadow of the Colossus, like, another boss battle. Exactly. Game. Each yeah, time, it's, each it's time boss you beat battle. a boss, you know, like, you can see how it's taking a toll on the character. Like, every, like, yes. later, like, he just becomes, like, it starts, like, a dead. It's, like, it has grand story significance and yes. the bosses themselves are like literally giants they're literally colossi humongous so oh i mean i love giant stuff it's just epic on all levels me too me too and that's why i'm excited for pacific room too yes Ugh. also uh, a godzilla sequel would be great true because i love the 2014 godzilla by gareth edwards director that that like took godzilla and made him not cheesy anymore for me it actually yeah it's so i love it i do wish they like, oh I, shit! I I, I, I I enjoyed it, but I mean it's not a perfect movie. I, I know that, yeah. but like for me, it's I just really like liked it. seeing Godzilla in 
amazing quality now and not yeah. cheesy and he's actually well the story was handled with like a lot of emotional gravitas as well mm. like it can get a little dry because the main character is kind of a blank slate for like the audience to imprint themselves on Brian Cranston was in it for three minutes I admit that was disappointing yeah um but and like Godzilla it takes a while to show up but man once he does yeah, honestly, like, in love. once he did finally show up and, like, actually they showed, like, what he did and, like, the fighting and stuff, oh my god. Yeah. It was I also love it when Godzilla's the hero, not the villain. Yeah. And he was the hero. And, uh, because, I, I don't know, Godzilla's kind of cute and likable. Yeah. Even though he's, uh, like, uh, I don't even know how tall. 500 feet? Like, that fits. probably. He's like bigger than all the buildings in that city at the end. I think this is the biggest Godzilla. I think it is, yeah. He's just huge. He's humongous. Like he's he's bigger than like the other monsters and, and those mutos in that movie are big themselves. So Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty big. And I can't did you see the um Oh wait, did you see Kong Skull Island? I haven't, but I mean I I, I know some things about it. Did you see the um about that scene. You can spoil me. Spoilers for that movie. Oh man. Because I, I don't know if I'm if I want to see Kong Skull Island because it sounds kind of like a popcorn flick and I. I'll tell you what. Wait, what do you mean by pop? Like describe. What like you just mean? mindless action. The story was kind of like whatever. All right, I'm gonna. I loved Peter Jackson's King Kong. I loved yes. it. Oh my god, I loved it. See, I, I want to see that more. And I still like it more than Kong Skull Island, but I did enjoy Kong Skull Island. Okay. Well, that's and good. Yeah, Maybe I will see it. Yeah, just, I mean, give it a shot. Right. Because well, I mean, I kind of have to because they're apparently going to fight in this monster. This universe. is what I have to tell you. This is what I have to tell you. Oh, oh shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, if you fly in this room, I think you can bypass a lot of this bullshit. So, in the after... <laughs> like, fly to the left. I don't know how to fly. It's okay. Just, like, keep running and press B. And then, like, do that thing, but do it to the right. Oh. You tried. You uh, can say you tried. You tried. That's all that matters. <laughs> these, what are these things? Uh, anyway. Balls. Yeah, tell me about the uh, the Marvel credit scene at the end of Kong Yeah, Island. okay. Alright, um... So, in the end of... You see the characters, like the two main characters. Yes. Yeah. Tom Hiddleston and... Brie Larson, I think? Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, yeah, they're in like a room. And remember, this is like... Oh! <laughs> God damn, these troll <laughs> levels. Now you gotta do all that shit again. Ah! <laughs> and yeah, you see them, they're, yeah. they're in a room, and they're like, you know, why are we here? It's like kind of like a government type room, and like, it's just like, they're brought there, and there's like a projector, and this is like, yeah. I think the 70s or 60s or something. Oh, yeah, so Kong Skull Island's before Godzilla. Yeah. So yeah, it's before, and they were like, "Okay, we we found these um, these uh, like cave paintings." Oh. And they were like, "Okay," and then they showed them, and the first one I believe was Mothra. Oh. And then the second one was um, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot what the, the the pterodactyl. I forgot its name. Oh, I I know what you're talking about. And then the third Is one. Is it like whatever? I know, I know, I'm familiar with the monster. Yes. Okay, and then the third one was King Ghidorah. Oh! And I think oh, shit, man. And then the fourth one was Godzilla! Ah! And then I was like, oh my god! And These then, movies. Like, and then oh. you heard him roar at the end of it, like when the screen went black. Alright. And I was, I just like, I'm, I'm getting hard. chills now, and it's like, oh. Okay, yeah, get, no, get those coins. Alright, now get that switch and get the hell out of here. Where's the switch? I just... it, back in the block. The blocks. No, I skipped. You don't have the left. Oh god. <laughs> Get that switch? Get that. Just press it, press it, press it, press it. Press it. Press it. Okay, now get the hell out of here. Oh my god. <sighs> See, watching a movie doesn't give me this amount of stress. That's another unique thing about video games, for better and worse. You don't, you don't always know the outcome. Oh, that's good. exactly. Good job, Luigi. Holy shit. Dude, so you can go through the vanilla dome and I'll go on top of it. Oh, yeah. 
It's like we're embarking on our own adventures. Oh, did you know that, um, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto is inspired by a lot of childhood things for, for these Nintendo games, right? Mm. Well, um, cause like, uh, he explored, he liked exploring caves and stuff near his home okay. when he was a kid, and that's like what inspired the original Zelda, right? Okay. Um, so Breath of the Wild kind of has like a similar story, cause either Miyamoto was a Boy Scout in Japan, or, or he was around scouting or something like that. And like going on a trip, like a hiking trip. Ah! Oh, no. Fuck! Oh, gosh! I hate that goddamn pufferfish. Yeah. Make him dead. I love these dolphins though, so I mean, makes up for that. Anyway, um, literally a hiking trip that he went on. Ah! <laughs> sorry, no, 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 no! I'm sorry! Drunk. Whatever. Whatever. That kind of worked out. Anyway. He, uh, he went on this hiking trip, and, um, like, coming to the top of the mountain was what inspired him, um, like, a little bit for Breath of the Wild. Oh, like, it's, wow. it's overworld design. Like, he wanted people to have that feeling, um, along with the other developers and designers of Breath of the Wild, of course, because it's yeah. not just Miyamoto anymore for lots of these things, but, um, you, you know, you get that feeling in Breath of the Wild. Like, you can climb every mountain, you know? And, like... And that, like, Boy Scout experience is, like, kind of what inspired him. Or maybe it was A. Anuma. Maybe it was A. Anuma that had that experience. So it, was, it reminded me of Miyamoto. Okay. Because A. G. A. Anuma is, like, the director of the series now. Anyway, it doesn't matter who it was. It's just, like, it's cool how thing, like, small things that can inspire us, like, even inspire video games, not just, like, books and yeah. stuff like that. And there's no experience that you can get, like... The ones you get from playing Breath of the Wild or video games in general. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? There's not another game where you can ride a river of lava, yeah. jumping over derpy dragons, derpy lava dragons who want to eat you. You know? Yeah. Dude, totally. <laughs> they, like that's what that's what we try to do with video games, right? We we try to escape into like a different world. Yeah. Because otherwise, we just we just came to my place after having a two-hour class about news writing. Oh. <laughs> like, but now we're having adventures in uh, dinosaur land. <laughs> yeah. So, as corny as that sounds, because, like, admittedly, we're not actually in dinosaur land. The Dude. Mario Brothers don't exist, sadly enough. But it's all about the fantasy. It feels comics. like they exist. Exactly. And that's all that matters for something like this, is that it feels like it. Like, thinking about them not existing is just, like... Depressing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the way you get around that is just be like, oh, different universes. Perfect. Yeah. That that's the solution Ooh. for everything, dude. That was close. That was like that shouldn't have died. I should have got hurt. You should have died. I should have. Dude, that was like fate, man. Fate, yeah. It's, it's full circle now. <laughs> what the hell? You just went from lava world to ice world, man. The logic. Hey, caves. They have weird things going on. Some caves are cold. Some caves are hot. You just went in a different. Why didn't you get that? Well, I didn't want it. But your Firefly would have went in storage. Oh, yeah. Whoa! You can always get the item in storage by pressing select. So there's literally nothing wrong with getting that. Maybe you just want to challenge yourself. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that one. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> but I want to push you. Dude, these, uh, these right triangles, man. Well, now that I'm reminded of right triangles, you might know where I'm going with this now. I have to document my my bizarre um, symbolism, okay? So, if you've watched the vlog here on the channel, um, you may have seen me make fun of the right triangle sculpture we have on campus, or like seriously use it in thumbnails. Like it's part, it's one of the recent thumbnails actually. <laughs> like like seven weeks ago or whatever. Yeah, and um, like my face is in there too. It's not just the right triangle, but anyway. <laughs> Um, I, there's three phases of our lives, right? And there's like childhood, adult puberty, which for us is college, and then the rest of your life. So, I literally came up with this out of my ass today, and I think Freddie was both impressed and disgusted with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was like, dude, childhood is one leg of the triangle. College is another leg, and the longest side, the hypotenuse, is the rest of our lives. So there you go, people. There you go. Knowledge to chew on. 
None of you asked for this. Dude, dude, don't, don't screw it up, man. Dude, we're actually running out of time more than I thought we would. I don't know why that is. Like, Mario games, like, you're always on a time limit. Which I don't like, especially in a game like 3D World, where it's like, hey, some levels are bigger, explore yeah. them. Oh, wait, you can't, because yeah. you're on time limit. But, uh, that's one thing Donkey Kong Country has better over this game. There's no time limit on any of the levels. So you can just kind of breathe. Yeah. I mean, the levels are already hard enough, right? Like, I could not imagine a time limit if I was going through those barrel blasts. Oh, exactly. I would stab myself in the leg. They were, exactly. They were hard enough as it was. Yeah. Like, it doesn't need a time limit. Seriously. Oh, man. Well, I'm a... Oh, are you... S no. <laughs> I tried to, obviously, use my uh, cape player Ooh. to kill it, and that didn't work. So you live and you learn. Ooh. We've been going for uh, about 45 minutes on this podcast, just about random shit. I know. It does not feel like 45 minutes, but... We, uh, I mean, I think most of this stuff was about video games in a roundabout way. It, yeah. Sometimes people just enjoy people listening to talk about the bullshit. Yeah. And isn't life just really a collection of bullshit? There's nothing better than a good conversation. That's right. God damn, you shouldn't be able to throw those that fast underwater. <sighs> Illogical. But Illogical. Anyway, was there anything else you want to talk about on this episode, Freddy? I'm trying to think. Because I don't want to... Ah! Oh. No! I mean, I, I, there's no way I could have oh, avoided no! all of it. There's no way I could have avoided all of it. That's bullshit. That's bullshit! There's too much bullshit! Uh, Did you see that? Freaking ball and chain, dead fish and dead Koopas, all trying to kill me at the same time. No. At the same time. And I didn't die. I'm actually proud of myself on that one. Yeah, you should be. Are you proud of me, Freddy? A little bit. Just a little bit. Are you proud of me? Just a little bit. I need affirmation from my friends Whoa. or else I'm gonna die! You're not gonna get it, so... <laughs> oh, shit. Sure. Dude, that's the thing. We gotta love ourselves before we can love others. Yeah. I've been learning that recently. Oh, yeah. It's like, you, you can't... Yeah, which maybe is too much personal information. Well, I'm fine with you. No, man, I mean... Like... I get it. No, seriously, like... Ah, get the hell away from me! You can't be on the same... Hmm. These goddamn bastards. Sometimes not loving yourself before Reznor loving others. Dude, this is the boss I was telling you about yesterday. It's Reznor. The fuck. I've never seen this in my life. I know because it's a secret boss, and he's dead. He's dead. So to end the podcast, my camera's about to die. <coughs> what does Mario say? Peace.